Ah, greetings dear viewers, I'm George from Ireland. Here I am in Dolben Street, or on Dolben Street I should say, uh, in London. And behind me is the house where Mary Wollstonecraft uh, lived for several years. So, just in case you don't know, Mary Wollstonecraft is widely regarded as being the mother of modern feminism. Now her ideas were not, uh, were not entirely original, um, but uh, she's she advanced feminism more than anyone else, she articulated it more effectively, and of course her magnum opus is a vindication of the rights of women. And she was writing at a time of um, political ferment, great upheaval, um, it being the, the French Revolution, her the plaque still in view. Um, and uh, that's why she, she'd heard about the rights of man and of citizen, uh, written published in France. The Declaration of Rights of Man and Rights of Citizens said, well, there ought to be something for women as well. Vindication, in case you don't know what that word means, is like mm, proving the cause of. Right? Someone who's found guilt, not guilty of a crime often says, I have been vindicated. Or right? so when, you, when you're, you conquer with your words, I suppose, if you're going to give it its, it's literal um, uh, definition. So uh, she's born here in London in 1759 um, into a middle class family. She was a, a very bookish sort and there are plenty of books around the house, uh, fortunately for her. So, um, and uh, uh, her family, they were dissenters, which is to say they were Protestants, but not of the major religious denomination. Um, they belonged to a minor Protestant denomination. And there was a place in North London called Newington Green, where it was a bit of a a community of dissenters. So most of the people who lived there belonged to reformed churches that were not the Church of England. Quakers, Baptists, Presbyterians, Methodists and so forth. And Methodism was a very new thing at the time. Um, and uh, she read some books and there was a, there was a Protestant clergyman, well a non-conformist clergyman I should say, who had published a book, his, his guide for young ladies, how they could be educated, what they could do. So um, in those days, um, uh, well, well-paid jobs were for healthy young men. And if you weren't healthy or young or a man, if you weren't all three categories, then there were very few jobs for you that weren't abysmally paid. This really was poverty pay. And uh, this is a time when, yes, most children went to school, but only for a, fair, for a few years. And it might be a schooling that was scarcely worth the having, just in, in a room that was um, open and <laughs> had, a, had, had to sit on the floor. Might be a blackboard, might write on slates, or just learn to read but not to write. Um, so very poor conditions, a huge class taught by someone who wasn't that well educated himself or herself usually was a her if it was a primary school run by charities run by the um, run by the by churches could be the Church of England could be one of the non-conformist churches occasionally the Catholic Church um, and that was that only two universities um, in England obviously a few in Scotland Ireland we weren't part of the UK at the time um, and so there were a few highly educated people who had who had access to better jobs those were obviously only for men. And a woman could become a teacher, but that's it. All the other professions were, were, were barred to her. She couldn't be an accountant, an engineer, a doctor, a barrister, solicitor. Forget it, absolutely not. Only to the, in the 1860s did a woman manage to qualify as a physician, and that was the, with the greatest of um, endeavor and overcoming many obstacles, um, Elizabeth Garrett Anderson. But back to uh, Mary Wollstonecraft. So um, she was a very broad-minded person. She had such an inquiring mind, and uh, she was imbued with really boundless self-confidence and energy. Uh, she was also quite well-traveled. Uh, she traveled around Scandinavia in particular and le left a, a record of, of all this. So um, she was romantically involved with a number of men, um, and uh, she married one time, but her marriage failed. Then she met a man whom uh, she found uh, just irresistibly attractive, but um, uh, he was, there was one small problem, his wife. So uh, Mary Wollstonecraft said she wouldn't be a homebreaker, she'd do the honorable thing. She'd go to this other woman and said, you know, I have fallen head over heels in, in love with your husband. Um, would you mind if we lived together, all the three of us? You can guess what his wife said, and it was shorter than, than yes. Um, and probably, uh, probably um, a few expletives added on the end. Uh, and what was the other way? Uh, the other thing is she said, okay, okay, how about, um, there's no physical aspect between me and him. I can just be around him, but like uh, platonic. And his wife obviously still wouldn't accept that. I mean, that's probably unrealistic. Um, so uh, she later had an affair with a married man and she, she gave birth while she wasn't married. Um, she, was, she was in Paris uh, just after the French Revolution, because obviously that's 1789, and the French Revolution wasn't that revolution to begin with. It took them over three years to abolish the monarchy. It took them about six months after that to execute the king. So, um, and obviously France and the United Kingdom were at peace to begin with. 
Um, and so she was able to travel there freely and study the new situation. And some of the French revolutions, they had ideas which were extraordinarily radical. Okay, of course, the French revolutions were a very uh, broad church. They would have become rather less latitudinarian later. But some of them believed that women ought to have political rights. And France briefly experimented with granting women the vote. And um, obviously, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, she was um, a teenager at the time of the American Revolution. So she saw that societies could be transformed quite rapidly and therefore was optimistic that the, situa that the um, situation, the fair sex, could be dramatically improved in a short um, uh, space of time. Um, and New Jersey, when the United States was founded, New Jersey granted women the right to vote. So, uh, and obviously this was followed with, with the keenest interest by Mary Wollstonecraft and her circle. However, after some years, New Jersey then decided to deprive the female electors of the franchise. Um, so uh, what else about her? Yeah, so a pr prolific um, author. She briefly worked as a governess for a noble family in Ireland. I was at Lord's Kingsborough, I can't quite remember. So she, she's a scintillating um, uh, figure. And um, she uh, w had a relationship with um, William Godwin, the, um, the, the cafe owner. He was um, a radical and anyone who was anyone amongst the um, London radicali would, would drop into his coffee house. We would have called it coffee house rather than cafe in those days. And uh, they were discussing their radical nostra and their writings, littérateur, um, frequented this place. So um, then she was um, delivered of a daughter um, uh, named um, also named Mary, but unfortunately Mary Wollstonecraft died just a few days later. Now, um, I think I'm right in saying she's buried in St Pancras Old Church, not St Pancreas, not the organ, Pancras. Uh, it's a church a bit north of the centre of London, by St Pancras Station. Um, uh, and so that was that, and I, th I believe her grave has been lost. But um, um, in the 20th century, there was a renewed curiosity about her writings, and um, feminists held her, held her up as an icon. She was a woman a century, perhaps two centuries, ahead of her time. She was, uh, well, intellectually courageous, willing to say things which were regarded as scandalous by the great and the good, by, by my moderate opinion. Being moderate isn't always a good thing. You know, this is, what, this is one thing that troubles me about this new definition of extremism as branding people extremists. Gender equality, racial equality, um, an end to corporal punishment in schools, abolition of slavery, all sorts of things. All these nostra were at one time regarded as extreme. They were beyond the pale. And they're now, wide, they're now widely accepted. They are mainstream. So um, things that we might regard as repugnant now, a century or two hence, might be seen as normal and um, absolutely morally right. And why, why do people ever doubt this? So um, that's uh, Mary Wollstonecraft. Wasn't talking about contraception or abortion or anything like that. Um, was somewhat attracted to the, to the idea of free love, uh, was rather disillusioned with mainstream Christianity, even nonconformist Christianity. Incidentally, nonconformists and dissenter can be used interchangeably, as in Protestants who are not the established church. Um, so uh, what else about her? Yeah, she, she espoused um, almost every radical uh, viewpoint you can think of. So her daughter, um, Mary Godwin, grew up um, to marry Shelley, the poet Percy Bysshe Shelley, who used to drop in on this cafe and I won't tell you the whole story, but anyway, uh, well, a bit like history repeating itself, Shelley, what a wonderful man. There was a small problem, he's already married and had two children, married to Harriet. Um, but uh, William Godwin nevertheless encouraged the relationship between his daughter and the married poet because uh, he came from an affluent family and, he, and um, William Godwin thought that, his, that Shelley would inherit a ton of money. It didn't quite pan out that way. Harriet, then this 19-year-old mother of two, um, when her husband had left her, she was so distraught, she threw herself into the Serpentine, a pond in Hyde Park, London, drowned herself at the age of 19. Ha um, uh, Shelley had already run off with Mary Godwin, as in daughter of this one, daughter of, of, of Mary Wollstonecraft, who was pregnant by him. So she had a further two children. Shelley, he, he drowned too, actually. Died the same way that his first wife had died, but not suicide in his case. Um, when his boat capsized off Livorno, or Leghorn as we call it in Italy. Anyway, that is um, Mary Wollstonecraft. She was castigated by um, uh, more traditionalist people. Clergymen denounced her from the pulpit, described as a hyena in petticoats and so on, that uh, she was monstrous, that uh, she, she, there was some sort of feminist plot to destroy the family, but they didn't use the word feminist at the time, that uh, she was in league with the French Revolution. Well, she didn't have some sympathies for those, for the French Revolution. Of course, nowadays we regard that some of the um, um, aims of the French Revolution as entire, of the French Revolution is, is entirely reasonable. 
and, and we've replicated them. The abolition of, of feudalism would actually already happened here um, a couple of centuries earlier. Um, so there's a, there's a wider appreciation of her writings now. People are not so judgmental about her personal life, the fact that she committed adultery, that she was an unwed mother. Um, people wouldn't look askance at that anymore. All right, so that is Mary Wollstonecraft.